agenda speaks to the needs of Lagosians. And our government is working for the people. In the last five years, we have driven an economic agenda, the Themes Plus agenda, having all the pillars attend to the yearning and demands of the people of Lagos. In critical areas where we believe growth and development can happen, businesses have equally been given the pathway and opportunity to do well and flourish. This is according to Governor Babajide Sowunlu. The governor was speaking when he received the British High Commissioner Richard Montgomery at the Lagos House Marina. Sawulu also told the British High Commissioner that generally his government has created a peaceful, secure and safe environment for everyone to thrive. And this is the Greater Lagos Vision. Lagos is truly rising. I'm your host, Love Ikuku Oyedoku. On this episode, Sawonlu pays glowing tribute to his deputy Hamzat on Sisi's birthday. Lagos State Government reassures business community of enabling environment. Governor Sawonlu, and others, assure on economic recovery, seek more women inclusion in governance. Details of these and many more when we return. Please stay with us. This is Lagos, the heartbeat of Nigeria, a city steeped in rich cultural heritage and now poised to become a global financial center. Well, a lot may us show, and it's an opportunity for us to just depict what Lagos is all about. And it's only at the event like this, competing with other bigger cities and other nations, that you can get to tell your story. So it's storytelling time for us. In a historic moment, Lagos made its inaugural appearance at the renowned Lord Mayor Show in London, a testament to its growing economic prominence. Lagos is a big mega city on its own right now. It's the largest city in Africa. It's the biggest economy that is a sub-national in Africa. But we want to make it one of the international financial centers in the world. All we're trying to do is to be able to let the world know that Lagos is indeed ready for bigger business. Lagos isn't just open for business. It's a gateway to the future, embracing innovation and welcoming investors from around the globe. We invite the world to witness Lagos's dynamism, progress, and the myriad of opportunities available for transformative, groundbreaking projects. Lagos is a bit ready to take over the world in the financial space, you know, in the economic space, and to truly, really be able to tell both the Lagos, the Nigerian, and the African story, and be able to let other parts of the world know who we are, understand our culture, understand that we are the center of culture, entertainment, music, in the whole of Africa, and to also be able to, for people to know um, what we have to give to the world. So the whole idea, right, is for us to be able to let the world, get them to know what is happening in Lagos. But GDP of Lagos is actually bigger than the GDP of Kenya, it's bigger than Ghana, it's bigger than Rwanda, and it's bigger than Senegal. As a little sub-national, it's very big in how it stands, in how it sits, and it's all of that conversation that we think a lot of people need to know what is happening in Lagos, you know, and how we can use the Lagos story, you know, to sort of like tell the African story. The Lagos State Governor Babajide Sawunlu has declared that the bond between him and his deputy, Dr. Obafemi Hamzad, has transcended the current offices they occupy, describing him as a very hard-working, dependable, and loyal. The governor stated this in his Google message at the 60th birthday celebration of Dr. Hamzad, held at the Alausa Central Mosque in Ikeja. He 
It was a gathering of political bigwigs, traditional rulers, frontline clergymen, and members of Lagos State's Executive Council. They are here to celebrate with the Deputy Governor of Lagos State, Dr. Obafemi Hamzat, as he clerks 60. The mood of the occasion took off with a session of prayers for the celebrants. <laughs> Time, thank you for the grace of being alive today. Thank you, O oh Lord, on behalf of our father and our brother, all of us gathered here and around Lagos and world together. We have come to say thank you today because it has pleased you to spare the life of our father and our brother. Be exalted in the name of Jesus Christ. A reign of tributes rent the air. Leading the park was Lagos State Governor Babajide Sawunlu who spoke glowingly about the cordiality he enjoys with his deputy. Friends and well wishes took turn to eulogize Dr. Hamzad. At 60, sir, I am here to challenge you with the word of the Lord. It's not yet time for you to begin to wind down. At 80, Joshua said, and Caleb said, give me another mountain. As I was at 40, so I am right now. You are not 80 yet, sir. You are only 60. So we expect you to refire. We expect you to re-engage and for you to go forward and like the word says that you should stretch some more the christian community in lagos is happy with you the muslim community is happy with you and you are a record breaker the deputy governor was overwhelmed by the encomiums as he used the occasion to speak on current reforms the country is undergoing Presently, he urged Nigerians to be patient with President Bola Chinubu. So, Mr. Governor, may God continue to be with you. My darling sister, you are a very good woman. I saw your passion. Uh, the way Governor Mazogu, ah, oh, team, much, okay? <laughs> so, we, we thank you. We thank you for your passion, your dedication. God will continue to bless you and your children will fulfill their destinies. I'm grateful to you. My darling sister, my darling wife also. You know, um, she's like, she's like a shock absorber. Nothing, whatever it is. Anyway, so I thank you very much for being a good wife, for being a good mother, and for the children. May God continue to bless you all. Highlights of the event was a cutting of the cake by the deputy governor. 51, 52, 52 53, 53, 53, 53, 53, 53, 53, 53, 53, 53, 53, 53, 53, 53, 53, 53, 53, 53, 53, The Lagos State Government has declared that the state is open for business and has restated its commitment to create an enabling environment for all businesses to thrive. The State Commissioner for Tourism, Arts and Culture, Toke Benson Awoyinka, stated this while fielding questions from journalists shortly after a tour of some tourist sites in Lagos Island. The Commissioner for Tourism, Arts and Culture, Toke Benson Awoyinka, led a tour of the historic Onikon House. She was accompanied by the managing director of Selling Bank, Abubakar Suleiman, and the director general of the National Commission of Museums and Monuments, Nigeria, Olubili Holloway. The group learned about the wealth of culture and history embodied by the Onikon House. 
Next, the group visited the National Museum where the commissioner explored Nigeria's historical artifacts and underscored the significance of preserving and showcasing the nation's heritage. During her campaign to promote cultural tourism in the region, Benson Awoyinka towards the historic J.K. Rondo Center on Lagos Island. The architecturally impressive and historically significant center serves as a vital cultural hub for the state of Lagos. Her visit included an in-depth exploration of the center's diverse facilities, such as exhibition halls and event spaces. The tour concluded with a visit to Freedom Park on Lagos Island. This national memorial, historical landmark, cultural site and arts and recreation center has a storied past. It once served as a prison for political activists who fought for Nigeria's independence. Benson Awoyinka, so elated, gave her thoughts on the tour. Lagos is a huge city that is filled with so much history and so much heritage. The untold story of Lagos, that's the reason why we have come up this morning with the MD of Sterling Bank and the DG of the National Museums to show Lagosians and to show the world the potential of Lagos tourism. The potential of Lagos tourism, the potential of showing off our heritage, the potential of us telling our history the way it should be told and not our history being told by other people. It is also to show our children that there's so much embedded in Lagos, there's so much culture, there's so much heritage and there's so much to do out here rather than us going to look for things elsewhere outside of our shores. So the tour mainly this morning is to showcase what you can do on a normal day in Lagos. On a normal day in Lagos, you can visit a lot of places. On a normal day in Lagos, you can relax. Lagos is about leave, work and play. She highlighted the need for continued collaborations and investment in cultural sites. Lagos is open to business. Lagos is open to promote tourism. Lagos is open to showcase our art and our heritage, our culture. We're embedded with so much culture and this is the time to show it. So we're going to create that enabling environment for all the businesses in Lagos to thrive, for collaborations, for people, for our young people to thrive. Because if you look around us, we have a demography of very, very young individuals who are waiting out there, seeking that for us to hold up that hand and we're ready for them now. Let's remind ourselves is that Tourism is also a business. Um, the way you grow tourism, the way you grow art and, and culture and the creative industry is to make sure that there is enough resources to invest. It's only when you've invested that you can then raise the standard so that people from all over the world can see and be willing to come here. If you go on this tour and you see the incredible wealth of um, history that is hidden on the ground, that is just waiting to be put out there, you understand that there is a lot of opportunity for business, opportunity for job creation, opportunity to also project this city and this country in the right light and that's what we are trying to do. I think the most important thing in this partnership is for us to, like I always say, begin to retell our stories. The National Museum itself is a national monument and within that we have artifacts that go as far back as the 15th century. So these artifacts tell not just the Lagos State story but the story of Nigeria. And by partnering with Lagos State, we can make the National Museum a tourist destination in a wider ecosystem of cultural tourism. Oniko itself is a cultural hub. Today we went to the Oniko House, we went to the uh, National Museum, we went to the Randall Center, but you know we also have the Muson Center here. So this in itself can be made a tourist hub. And by working with the Lagos State Government and incorporating the National Museum, it's obvious that now with this handshake, the gone are the days where you say, oh, this is state, this is federal. As far as visitors are concerned, I'm sure they don't have any business knowing which is state or federal. They just want to come and immerse themselves in the people's culture. And with this union, I believe that that definitely will happen. The commissioner firmly believes that collaboration between the public and private sectors is crucial for showcasing the region's rich cultural heritage and economic opportunities. This is Lagos, the heartbeat of Nigeria, a city steeped in rich cultural heritage and now poised to become a global financial center. Well, a lot may us show, and it's an opportunity for us to just depict what Lagos is all about. And it's only at an event like this, competing with other bigger cities and other nations, that you can get to tell your story. So it's storytelling time for us.
In a historic moment, Lagos made its inaugural appearance at the renowned Lord Mayor Show in London, a testament to its growing economic prominence. Lagos is a big mega city on its own right now. It's the largest city in Africa. It's the biggest economy that is a sub-national in Africa. We want to make it one of the international financial centers in the world. All we're trying to do is to be able to let the world know that Lagos is indeed ready for bigger business. Lagos isn't just open for business. It's a gateway to the future, embracing innovation and welcoming investors from around the globe. We invite the world to witness Lagos's dynamism, progress, and the myriad of opportunities available for transformative, groundbreaking projects. Lagos is a bit ready to take over the world in the financial space, you know, in the economic space, and to truly, really be able to tell both the Lagos, the Nigerian, and the African story, and be able to let other parts of the world know who we are, understand our culture, understand that we are the center of culture, entertainment, music in the whole of Africa, and to also be able to, for people to know um, what we have to give to the world. So the whole idea, right, is for us to be able to let the world, let them to know what is happening in Lagos. But GDP of Lagos is actually bigger than the GDP of Kenya, it's bigger than Ghana, it's bigger than Rwanda, and it's bigger than Senegal. As a little sub-national, it's very big in how it stands, in how it sits, and it's all of that conversation that we think a lot of people need to know what is happening in Lagos, you know, and how we can use the Lagos story, you know, to sort of like tell the African story. Akwaibom State Governor Umor Eno says the challenges facing the nation are not strange, but Nigerians are simply going through a temporary phase that will soon become history. Governor Eno said what matters is a determination to forge your head and encourage people to make their right decisions, even when those decisions may initially seem unpalatable. He said this during the opening ceremony of the 24th National Women's Conference organized by the Committee of Wives of Lagos State Officials Council. Women from diverse socio-economic backgrounds gathered for the 24th National Women's Conference organized by the Committee of Wives of Lagos State Government Officials Council. This edition of the conference aimed to address the various challenges facing women, empowering them and support their pursuit of independence and self-actualization. Speaking as a guest of honor at the opening ceremony, Akwaibom State Governor Umo Eno who was represented by his deputy, Senator Akon Eyakeni, called for greater inclusion of women in the governance process to drive quicker, more positive and more visible results. Considering the array of great minds in this arena, this conference holds great promise for Nigeria. My belief is that with gender equality, we can achieve more for our people, break more glass ceilings, and walk towards a more gender-friendly governance. At the event, Governor Babajide Sawunlu pledged that his administration will continue to develop programs to empower women and increase their participation across all levels of government. He reiterated his administration's commitment to serving the people of Lagos better by creating more opportunities for women, youth and businesses to reach their full potential, aligning with the government's themes plus development agenda. This conference, in our view, is not just a garden of minds, but it's a call to action. It challenges us to break free from the constraints that hold us back to channel our energy positively. And we believe that when we channel our energy positively, we'll enrich lives, not only our lives, but lives around us. Our communities need you. 
our community deserves you. Our communities would be better if women like you thrive to empower others, fully take charge, and take not only the home front, but also the sighter front, the workplaces, and show leadership at all of these places. The wife of the Lagos State Governor and chairwoman of the Committee of Wives of Lagos State Officials Council, Dr. Ibijukesa Wonlu, encouraged women to be selfless and challenge their limits, highlighting how council has positively impacted the lives of the vulnerable and continues to drive change and positivity among women across the state. The backbone of our homes and society, it is essential that we embrace the reality of the present economic situation, not only in Nigeria, but globally. The era of extravagant lifestyle is over. We must adjust, prioritize what truly matters, and lead by example in our homes and communities. Please, let's reduce the affluence. There's a lot of people out there that are feeling the pinch, even you. The scarcity, it affects everyone. The prices of food, it's affecting everyone. So we need to adjust. The 24th National Women's Conference is themed so beyond boundaries and rich communities. <laughs> This is Lagos, the heartbeat of Nigeria, a city steeped in rich cultural heritage and now poised to become a global financial center. Well, a lot may us show, and it's an opportunity for us to just depict what Lagos is all about. And it's only at the event like this, competing with other biggest cities and other nations, that you can get to tell your story. So it's storytelling time for us. In a historic moment, Lagos made its inaugural appearance at the renowned Lord Mayor Show in London, a testament to its growing economic prominence. Lagos is a big mega city on its own right now. It's the largest city in Africa. It's the biggest economy that is a sub-national in Africa. But we want to make it one of the international financial centers in the world. All we're trying to do is to be able to let the world know that Lagos is indeed ready for bigger business. Lagos isn't just open for business. It's a gateway to the future, embracing innovation and welcoming investors from around the globe. We invite the world to witness Lagos' dynamism, progress, and the myriad of opportunities available for transformative, groundbreaking projects. Lagos is a bit ready to take over the world in the financial space, you know, in the economic space, and to truly, really be able to tell both the Lagos, the Nigerian, and the African story, and be able to let other parts of the world know who we are, understand our culture, understand that we are the center of culture, entertainment, music, in the whole of Africa, and to also be able to, for people to know um, what we have to give to the world. So the whole idea, right, is for us to be able to let the world, get them to know what is happening in Lagos. But GDP of Lagos is actually bigger than GDP of Kenya, it's bigger than Ghana, it's bigger than Rwanda, and it's bigger than Senegal. As a little sub-national, it's very big in how it stands, in how it sits, and it's all of that conversation that we think a lot of people need to know what is happening in Lagos, you know, and how we can use the Lagos story, you know, to sort of like tell the African story. That's all we have for you on this episode of the Greater Lagos Vision on Plus TV Africa. I'm Lovey Kuku Oyedoku. Bye for now.